Iron Lad, Thor, and Sif head to a radiation-saturated island nicknamed Monster Island to find out what banner is hiding. Does Monster Island live up to its name? And what surprises will they find? Let's find out in our review of The Ultimates number 3 from Marvel Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of The Ultimates number 3. Well, this issue gets right down to the business of adding a Hulk to Earth 6160's roster in a setup issue that introduces readers to, I'm going to say this, I'm going to try it, the Jory Joanna Zachariah, who we now know is She-Hulk. Writer Dennis Camp gives readers a look into the callous machinations of Dr. Bruce Banner and how his experiments have killed or mutilated scores of Pacific Islanders, leading to the creation of the Marvel equivalent of Unmen and a super strong woman who may be the instrument of Banner's downfall. Before we dig into the details, let's recap what happened in the Ultimates number two. When we last we left Earth 6160's Avengers, the team suddenly decided to storm the White House and attack President Midas while he lounged around the Oval Office wearing a gold Iron Man suit. After a bizarre and heavy-handed tirade about capitalism from the Ultimates Universe's president, Iron Lad smashed through the Oval Office floor to find America Chavez strapped into a rig that siphoned off her powers, which were converted into energy that's used by the local power grid. No explanation was given as to how America got there, how the Avengers knew she was there, or why the President was using her as a living battery. The issue ended with the Avengers carrying America off. It was a very strange and bizarre issue, and honestly, we just wouldn't recommend it. So that brings us to the Ultimates number three. We learned how Dr. Bruce Banner, a member of the Maker's Council, willingly exposed Pacific Islands to the deadly fallout from his Banner Ulam Gamma Bond experiments. On one such island, populated by roughly 400 people or so, radioactive dust resulted in death, grotesque mutations, and a lot of horrific stuff. Plants grew to unheard of sizes. Lizards and wildlife became monstrous aberrations, and the surviving villagers experienced horrific side effects. We dinged Dennis Camp in the previous issues for heavy-handed political soapboxing, but here he draws inspiration from a real-life historical event that actually makes sense for the context and the type of character he's building here. Without actually saying it out loud, Dennis Camp appears to be using the real-life nuclear bomb testing near the Marshall Islands from 1948 to 1958 as the true inspiration for this story. Exposing the Pacific Islands to cruel gamma bomb experiments works as a perfect setup for a new quote-unquote type of Hulk, while elevating Banner as a cruel, malicious villain. Iron Lad, Thor, and Sif teleport into the island now, which is sometime later after these experiments have completed. They marvel, no pun intended, at the variety of mutated life, almost all of which is deadly to one degree or another. After a brief run-in with a kaiju-sized lizard that looks like an overgrown iguana, the trio runs into a humanoid beast with an abomination-like appearance and vibe, massive strength, and almost nothing to say. When the abomination attacks, the trio is outmatched at every turn until a Hulk-sized woman intervenes. The fight between the trio of heroes and this abomination-type character is brutal and energetic, but it's a bit odd. Thor and Hulk have fought more than once in multiple universes, but we've never seen Hulk easily deflect Mjolnir thrown at him with full force. Either Earth 6160's version of Mjolnir is much weaker than Earth 616's, or Dennis Camp forgot that the Hulk and Gamma related beings are not stronger than Mjolnir. Either way, the fight is energetic, but it rings a little untrue. The Hulk sized woman, who is a newcomer, sues the abomination to get it to calm down, just long enough to make it stop fighting and to relax. The beast reverts then to a human form, which happens to be, in this case, an infant child. The newcomer introduces herself as Lejori Joanna Zachariah, I think that's how you say it, one of the few villagers who survived radiation exposure as a small girl. She explains what happened to her island and their people to Iron Lad. Tony Stark is quick to suggest that an island of hoax could be the tipping point they need to confront the Maker and his council. But when Lejori shows him the debilitated state of her fellow villagers, an army of hoax is out of the question. To be blunt and clear, she has super strength and she is very Hulk-like in her appearance and control of her mind, but most of the villagers are just crippled and pathetic and sad and it's really awful to see. The issue ends with a bargain struck once Sif, Iron Lad, and Thor appeal to She-Hulk's better nature, if you will, but with a promise of reciprocating in kind. And we see a very angry Banner who isn't too happy about his years-long experiment being disturbed by outsiders. So let's talk about the good and the bad. What's great about the Ultimates number three? 
at the risk of making a backhanded compliment, this is the first issue from Dennis Camp that isn't particularly heavy-handed or weird or off-putting. If you've ever wondered what a completely new take on the Ultimate She-Hulk would look like, this version is as far away from the original as possible while still feeling Hulk-like and making sense within the context of the Ultimate universe. And in other words, this is a really good job of creating a variant that feels truly original. So what's not so great about the Ultimates number three? Dennis Camp's relatively action-free issue is emblematic of a series whose pace and plot have really yet to find solid footing beyond mildly engaging odds and ends. The series feels cobbled together without the requirement of telling a fully realized story that connects everything together. You get the impression Camp is coming up with the ideas as he goes without mapping out the journey from the beginning, which was Ultimates number one, to the eventual confrontation with the Maker, which is at current time is supposed to be about 16 months from now. Yes, the Avengers need a Hulk, and they should go through that process of acquiring a Hulk, whether it's She-Hulk or a regular banner or something in between. But acquiring her character as part of the team should be a side effect of a larger narrative, not as part of a hastily assembled checklist of piecing pieces together like their action figures. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. Juan Gary's art is the consistent high point of this issue and the series as a whole. You get Monster Island, which has kaiju-sized monsters that look monstrous, naturally, as they should. The unmen are pathetic and grotesque, and you really want to feel bad for them, which I think was the intended result. And She-Hulk looks like a decidedly different kind of She-Hulk than you're used to, which perfectly sets this version apart from her Earth-616 counterpart. In short, I like this take on She-Hulk, and the vision and the aesthetic and the design of everything works really well. So final thoughts where we think about the Ultimates number three, you get a standalone issue that gives readers a full history of Earth 6160's version of She-Hulk. Dennis Camp's setup is thorough and engaging and creative with just a palatable hint of commentary about the real life inspiration for this issue, which is the bombing in the Pacific Islands post World War II. Plus Juan Figueri's art looks great. The overall series is still slow, unfortunately, and it feels like it's treading water to be honest. But this is a solid one-off issue to introduce an interesting new variant to a familiar character. Therefore, the Ultimates number three earns a solid 6.5 out of 10. Issue number three is probably the strongest issue yet, but the series still lacks purpose and direction. But what do you think? Are you reading all the Ultimates titles? And if you are, which one is your favorite? Give us a thumbs up if you're a Marvel fan and leave us a comment below with your suggestion for which Marvel character needs to have an Ultimate version show up next. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.